So basically, this is the DBIC Masterclass going over the SP404. I'm going to go over certain things, my workflow, from pattern sequencer to resample mode to how I get my sounds into the SP sampling chopping inside of Ableton or whatever dog of your preference, Serato sample or whatever. And uh, I also have my drums inside of MC 101 so I can sample my drums directly in. So right now I have a sample from Soul Surplus. This is one of the samples for the challenge. And uh, let's see that sound. So, I have the sample, I have the sample inside of Ableton, and I can see, I already have it warped and all that, and I'm going to just chop it four bar, it's a four bar loop, I'm going to just chop it on every bar. So what I did already, I chopped it already. And I, I also have the sample process already before I even put it inside the 404. So like now, I know what the BPM is already before I even put it in. It's at 84 BPMs. So I can get my master BPM. Set that. So, just tell me you're gonna take a quick. We're gonna we're gonna take a quick break real quick. Get one of the the top view cameras on. Okay, you can go ahead and put some back in. Just a problem. Sorry, guys. We're just trying to make sure that it looks good for you. All yeah, right. we're trying to get all the views so you can see all the functionality. All right, sorry. Just one second. Okay, why don't you just start from the beginning again? Just all right, I'm going to just start from, the, start from the top one more time. So, a sample from Ableton. I got my chops in already. I got my drums in already from the 101. I sample my hi hats in on two different pads at different levels so I can have velocity. And then I'll resample it. So basically, I resampled it like this record, resample. And also, another thing to do before you can get to that point, I sample all my drums in mono. And I sample the sample in stereo so it doesn't phase anything out. Sometimes when you have all your sounds in stereo and if they trigger at the same time, it mutes out certain sounds. So a lot of times I just sample the drums in mono so it's not taking up as much space. So I'm about to resample a hi hat pattern real quick. So I do that. So I already did it earlier on this pad, so I got a little pattern here. So I'm gonna just record a pattern. I know the BPM is 84, so I'm gonna go with 84, and I quantize it since the hi hat loop isn't quantized. So I'm gonna quantize it at a quarter eighth note, eighth note. I'm sorry. And then I'm going to set the length to four bars. All 
right? Now I got the high end tuning work through. So now I'm gonna do the sample chop. So now, what I do is I quantize my first kick so it hits on the one. Do that at eight note as well. I could do on quantize now. So I'll do the snare. extra kick sometimes I'll have like two extra kicks for my ghost kicks so I don't have to overlap this first kick that's quantized on the eight so now everything is unquantized the rest of the way and you can rehearse by pressing the board it's in rehearse mode Vibe out for a little bit. copy this pattern normally I'll copy it like eight times so to copy it this is why it's better than the OG 404 it takes forever to copy the pattern so you just press shift and copy pad one quick
All right, so now. So now I'm gonna delete the sample on the other, the other patterns and then I'll make my variations. pattern with the bare drums, I'm going to copy that for a time, then I'll just do my variations. Alright, that's good. I'm going to delete. So sometimes I'll, I'll resample the, the chops with different effects. Sometimes I'll put a, a low pass filter. So I'm going to put the effect on the four chops. So. so I'm going to copy with the filter, the low pass filter to these next five, six, seven, and eight. Copy. I'm going to do a low pass on pattern two. All right. We got that. Then sometimes, well, I have the second SP. I like the... Uh, I like the auto filter on the OG 404 better than on the 404A or the SX. It sounds different for some reason. So while I'm re-running my line out into the line in of this 404, I normally put an equalizer and I'm running it through that. So it kind of boosts it up and I can kind of mix it. Or if I wanted to put vinyl sound on the overall beat while I'm working on it. It's like a good way to gauge the volume. So, also, if I want to sample my chops in here real quick, and get different effects that I like from the OG 404. So, like, um, Threshold. 
So once I get those, once I get all these chops in with the filter on it. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take the line out of this and I'm gonna put it back. Well, I'm gonna unplug this real quick. Line out. So now I'm gonna have my master back in here real quick. And then for my last 9, 10, 11, 12, my last four pads, I'm gonna put those chops on here. I'm gonna resample into it. So, uh, Auto threshold, shift and pad four. I normally put it at two so it can auto sample. So you could just press record and then it waits for once the first transient hits. All right, so I'm gonna sample. like my little mad scientist like going back and forth. But, uh, it works. Alright, pattern three. Go back to EQ which is a uh, equalizer and FX 13. a little low once I sample it in so you can also use the compression which is effect 12 I'll sample it to these pads.
So somebody just asked um, a question. It says, do you need two SPs? It seems like you really need to to do what you're doing. Well, so repeat the question. Do, do I need two SPs to um, do what I'm doing? Uh, you, you don't really need to, but um, I just like to have the option of um, having an effect on, like my EQ effect on while I'm working on the beat, or I could have vinyl sim on the overall beat, because sometimes when you're compressing, you need to level out your drums or hi-hats or a lot of the sounds that you need to be lower, that, that you want to be boosted up when you put your vinyl sim compression on. But I, I normally just have an EQ on sometimes, and then if I want to sample this whole overall beat into this SP, then I can start doing my mastering and just resampling it with the compression on. And then I could dump that into the computer. But uh, but for the basic beat, all you need is one SP, but it, it's just a preference thing. It's like some people, they'll have like a 303 because they like how the compression on that sound and they'll dump and go back and forth. Or if I had, Sometimes you can uh, you can resample your drum pattern right here, and then you can just chop on the fly without having to stop your pattern, which is a good thing. So uh, yeah, if you if you have the option to have two SPs, it you can get real tricky with the workflow. So. Uh, Finish resampling. back from the filter to I, I normally work in a bar pattern so I can have a little bit of variation if it's even a loop or something but, uh, pattern four
now I'm gonna put the effects on all the the sample chops. So by doing that, I press remain. These are already then I want them on these chops. So reason why I can do mute outs, I can do the DJ effects looper on the on the samples but not the drums. So the isolator can turn all of them. Yeah, and that's that's pretty much how I do that. But uh, I'll I'll start another one from scratch real quick, or go to one of the beats that I made from the sample challenge, and I'll reconstruct it. Uh, th does anybody have any questions uh, that you want me to to go over over some of the process before I move on to the next? It looks like you're dead. Nobody said anything. All right. I'm gonna go over a crispy sample from that sample pack in the channel. We have a quick question. It says, um, so what are the differences of using the SP instead of just using the controller in Ableton? Like the push um, and creating instruments, racks slash drum pads with samples. So I'll repeat the question. What are the differences of using the SP instead of just using a controller in Ableton? Um, oh, more so the the difference between using Ableton Push and the SP. So go ahead and repeat the question. So the difference between the two. So, so, the, so the, the difference between the uh, SP and uh, using the Ableton Push, uh, you can trigger, they both trigger, well, the push is basically mapped to Ableton and the, the BPM, because you work your beats in Ableton, it's, it's going to naturally trigger, but with the SP, it's not worked or nothing unless you do pre-work and it's not locked to a, a certain timing so you're kind of using your natural timing to trigger songs if you're talking about doing like a performance as in like mixing songs for like transitions and stuff so having like a full song on each track it's like a it's not locked to one bpm so say, as in Ableton, you can map a whole clip, and then you trigger it, and it's going to be on time. But um, but uh, as in beat making wise and triggering your samples, it's pretty much the same. Like a drum rack in Ableton is pretty much the same as putting your your drum sample, your one shots, and all that on the 404. But uh, 
this only has MIDI in. So, but there's ways to map it to Ableton with like a USB MIDI, uh, MIDI Uno, I think that's what it's called. But, um, and then you just map the SP to the, the drum rack. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the difference. Alright, this is uh, off the Frisbee sample. Right? See, 93 BP. So, let's see what it, the sample is at. Okay. Sometimes I'll do a delay, put a delay on the shots. You could do the note repeat, kind of, the way I do note repeat. You gotta have like three different kicks and I just trigger it kind of quick. sample that like that to one pad that's how I'll get the note repeat like on the MP or SP1200 do it that that's it so. pattern the way the MPC does. Is there a way around this? So I'll repeat the question. When you turn the SP off after sequencing a pattern, uh, yeah. the BPM doesn't stay locked at that pattern yeah. uh, the way the MPC does. Is there a way around this? Nah, you got, you kind of got to take notes or you got to remember what pattern that the, uh, the, the BPM, the beat was. But um, yeah, that's another thing you need to improve on. But um, I try not to get too far in the BPMs, or I'll, I'll just make a note of the BPM, and then, uh, but yeah, that's something they need to do, like the MPC, of course, and then you turn it off. Um, and then there's just, an, I'm just going to go through a couple quick questions. Um, so, how do you finish Master Beats um, 
on your other 404. I heard you mention that a little bit ago. All right. Uh, the way uh, I go through mastering beats on the other 404, for instance, I could try to I could try to master this one real quick. For instance, like I I didn't add no compression or nothing to it yet, so I just I'll sample it into this 404 real quick. So I'm going to sample it in with the equalizer, or you can sample it in dry, or you can see the levels with the, the vinyl sim compression, and then if I need to turn anything down. So it sounds like, it sounds like the hi-hats need to be lowered a little bit. Because with the compression, it, it brings up a, a lot of the lower sounds. So I'm just going to find where the hi-hats is at and lower it real quick. Sample it to this first, the first SD with no effects, just dry. Yep, 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 Sam.
FX12, so sometimes we'll do the double compression. Sometimes it doesn't need it. Sometimes the beat doesn't need the double compression, but that's if you want to get extra dirty with it. But um, yeah, that's why I, I have two uh, SPs so I can audition everything on the fly. Uh, any any other questions before? Yeah, there's a couple. Let me go back. Okay. Okay, so it says, how do I make clean loops without a little gap? Clean loops with, like in pattern loop, per se? I can't ask that, so I'm not uh, really sure. It says, how do I make clean loops without the little gap? Ah, uh, the gap. Okay, so I think what, you, what you're talking about is the, the gap when you're recording like a the pattern and a lot of the, the sound it kind of overlaps and then it it has like a little gap so the timing is seems like it's off so that's why i i resample my hi-hats and get the perfect loop of the hi-hats so that can determine the bpm of the overall beat and then when i do that in the pattern mode i just lock that in on the quantize on the eighth note because it's hitting exactly on the one and since it's hitting exactly on the one quantized but the hi-hats are not really quantized because you you have played them live by the sample so i'll do something on the fly real quick i'm gonna get a blank and we call it and i'll put some drums in there directly from one on one. Also, I have a limiter on my drums in the 101, so when I sample it in, it kind of gives it, it's kind of full. Like I like the, the effects on the 101. So, when I sample my drums in, I'm sampling in mono, so it doesn't conflict with any stereo sounds, so nothing is phased out. That's also an issue sometimes. Alright, let's go. So, we, to turn it mono, you gotta hit the stereo button. If it's not lit, that means it's in mono. Before I even do that, I'm going to hit shift and auto, auto trigger. I want that to be it too. Reason being, I, could, I hit that so you don't have no air in front of the, the drum when you sample it right away. Sometimes you want some air in front of it. So. Copy 
that hi hat. Now I'm gonna make the second hi hat. I'm gonna bring it down a little. So to audition now. Yeah, so normally I'll I'll play a sample out loud. I'll play a sample out loud so I can hear the hi-hat and just play along to the hi-hat while I'm resampling it. Play along to the sample. I got the drums in, but I'll do it a different way. Yeah, so I'll play a I'll just sample it directly to this. Let's be. says um how do you know if you're peaking too much on the 404 you're recording in your peak light is going crazy I'm not sure it says how do you know if you're peaking too much on the 404 you're recording in your peak light going crazy ah uh, yes yeah, it well it's going well you know by the light but um i'm just playing it live right now but when i'm recording it into the 404 i make sure that it's not peaking or it can slightly blink a little bit in the red but um 
it's only peaking because this this is not peaking. I'm, I'm chaining it through two, four, four, so. And it, it will also sound distorted if it was really peaking. So, uh. Also, you can't have the gate on or the loop, or it's going to do something weird when you're recording in pattern mode. So, you just want to have all of it deactivated. So, I'm going to set the quantize to an eighth note. But it's not really quantized because I resampled the hi hat, sorry. I'll do uh, two bars, four bars, just for the sake. Stereo, you want to sample in stereo, drums are in mind. Notice how it's not peaking at all now. Looping perfect.
copy the, the kick. I always make a habit to copy the kick two or three times. So, shift and pad one copies. All right. All right. So I copy, I just copied it, the kick three times. So I have two of them for the option of having for the ghost kicks. And then I have, I'm gonna have my first kick that hits on the one. I always quantize that because I sometimes when you're you doing the drums like unquantized from the start, it doesn't hit exactly on the one. So maybe that's why the loop doesn't. Like the SP is weird, like it doesn't, if it doesn't hit exactly on the one and sometimes you might overlap on the tail end when you're like playing it, it kind of overlaps it and it makes like a little gut. So yeah, I figured that out like years ago, but it took forever to figure that part out and then that's why I was never using pattern mode and I will always resample it. But um, once I figured that out. But um, I'm kind of using a combination of resampling and and pattern mode, so it's the best of both worlds. All right, so I'm gonna just quantize that first kick to hit on the one real quick. because it's in rehearse mode but uh, I could turn the quantize off now now it's off so I'm just do the snares copy it, all the drums by itself for like eight patterns and then you make your variations on each pattern. Alright, so I want to put a filter on them chops.
chunks. Sometimes you could you can even sample your chops with your delays in Ableton if you don't like these effects, these delays, but if you don't want to resample it and it saves time. turn this kick into a bass line, subsonic, this is number 22. Uh, 
that's it. Got these signs in here. Sense sounds in it, so you just scroll through it. So I could vibe out with it. sample mode and the pattern sequencer so uh, if there's uh, any other things any tips you want me to go over uh, it's a uh, uh, time right now before I uh, move on to the next beat. If I have, so it says if you're using Ableton, uh, the SME, if you're using Ableton, but I have control, if you're okay, you can see that one.
somebody has the best way to set up the traps on the 404. That would be one of them. What was the question? Hold on a second. Okay, so I've got a couple questions. It says, what does your mastering process look like after sending to the computer? Uh, so, uh, mastering, I'll, I'll use ozone pretty yes. much. My, my mastering process, um, I don't like to double compress. Like, I like to use ozone now. So I just... I have like a, I use a standard setting, pretty much, and then uh, I might just use, I just use the equalizer, pretty much on the 404 and do some of the compression in Ableton. It just depends on, on the beat, the direction. If I want to get that super side chain clumping type of sound, I'll I'll do like double compression in the 404, but um. I don't really do that too much nowadays. I'll just do the the compression in Ozo, and uh, it's just a regular preset. Vintage hip hop. I'll put that on the overall master. Sometimes I'll put a a limiter, and just certain uh waves plugins on the samples when I'm. I'm kind of like mixing it as I'm putting some of the, the samples into the 404. So like for instance, I have this on the sample, the CLA338 on my sample, it kind of kind of brings out the highs, makes it sound full, and then I'll turn it down with the utility a little bit, and then that's before it even hits the SP. And then if I want to do like extra filtering to the, the sample once I got it in the SP, you can do that if it needs it. And then it doesn't really need too much uh, compression lately from what I, I've been, like the formula always change up. But um, And then I have a limiter on my drums I have a limiter on my drums inside the 101, so that's kind of like the processing my drums go through, and then I might do a little bit of the isolator on my kicks, my, my drum hits, once I get it in the SP. But um, other than that, that's pretty much it for mastering. So. It says, um, we have another question. It oh, says, okay. can you copy pads, samples on the OG? Can you copy pads and samples on the OG 404? Well, it doesn't have that copy fit feature on the OG, but you just resample. So, for instance, if you want to copy your pad, you find the sound. You just want to get, you want to get it to an empty pad. Hey, yo. You want pad three to get to two. Just resample. If you want it with the stereo, or if you want it mono, just hit that before you hit the button. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. That's how you copy the pads on the OG 404 with the 404A or SX. Um, I have another question. A couple of them. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see here. So it says, 
Is MFX 12 always followed by EQ or the other way around? Um, a lot of times I'll, I'll, I might do the EQ last, the equalizer last in the chain. So it just depends because with the MFX 12, you kind of got to adjust your level with your third knot, your last knot. And then, um, because the compression kind of brings up certain frequencies, so the equalizer is the last thing in the chain to kind of tame certain stuff that gets boosted up. So a lot of the high frequencies you don't really want to be boosted up. You can you can kind of muddy it back up with the equalizer, and you can boost up certain lows. So I would have that last in the chain, and um. The 303 has the best equalizer out of all the SPs, but uh, they all do. They all they they all pretty efficient. Uh, but um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Mm, let's see here. It says, "How do you side chain compression in sequencer mode? How do you side chain compression in sequencer mode?" Uh. The, so I side chain compress and sequence mode. Yeah. It's, it's not really a side chain on the four four, but um, basically with the the way you compress. So when you're double compressing, that's how you kind of do your side chain. So sometimes if you're sampling your drums in with compression, like not full compression, but just certain certain like drum sounds, because like in resample mode. It's like you're auditioning, you're auditioning your sounds with the compression on, but you don't resample it with. It. You just like audition the sounds and level it out before you resample it with the compression on the final resample mode. But uh, in pattern mode, it's kind of the same same process. You just audition the sound. That's why I have the second SP. So I. I don't have to worry about resampling. I just throw it on the overall master and I'm just triggering sounds. If anything needs to be. You can kind of hear it. So you want your, but for the side chain pumping effect, you want your kick drum to be the loudest in the, in the process. So you're, kind of lowering your, your snare and your hi-hats and then you want your sample kind of, you don't want it as high and it's going to dug down wherever the kick hits. That's when, especially when you you have like the the MFX-12 with the vinyl sim compression. So, yeah, you can, you can do, you can do it in a pattern, sequence, or mode. Let's see here about another question. Um, can you cover what the remain key did in regard to assigning effects and doing dropouts? So can you basically cover the remain key, what the remain key did in regard to assigning effects and doing dropouts? Oh, the, the remain key. He said his live feed dropped out. It's something you were working oh, okay. on earlier. I'm not really sure. Oh, so... I have my I have my drops on on this SP vocal drops so I hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, 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 yo. and I have the line out running into the external source so whenever the beat plays so I want I want the equalizer on everything Yep, 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 yep. Dropouts and 
you just gotta do it on the fl- you gotta do it live. So if I was gonna record that line out of this this SP goes into your DAW or your Tascam recorder, what whatnot, or that's how you record the mute outs and all that with the the vocal drops live. And that's pretty much much it for that. Um, so another question, um, can you talk a bit about M- um, MFX 21 pitch in your workflow and also DJ FX looper for pitch? Talk a bit about it. Okay, so I, I don't really use the, uh, the SP pitch on, on the SPs, uh, except for the 202. Mm-hmm. I'll use that because it has real time pitch, but you can pitch your samples with the the DJ effects looper. So but it doesn't it's, it doesn't work with every sample, so that's why I don't I don't really use it as much. And it kinda muddy it, it kinda does something to the highs. So I just I'll normally sample through a, a pocket operator sometimes if I want just to pitch down samples and it has like the auto chop on it or I'll just go through Ableton pitch it how I want it, and then I'll just sample it, chop it live as I'm going into the SP. But um, I'll try to mess with the pitch real quick on the sample. Let's see. Alright, so. tends to work better with short samples so if you have chops it works but like if you have a long sample it like it, it kind of gets thrown off but uh, if you have short chops in there you can and you would just resample it to a, a different pad Yeah, so, and then the pitch on 21, let me uh, get to the pitch, show you that. The pitch, it kind of has like a time strip. I just don't like how it... Like it really, it really degrades the sample a lot. It depends in your taste, you know, with the. efficient way to record in the Ableton to track out this this is why I stopped resampling because like a lot of time you just gotta you gotta have that mix perfect when you resample and then because however you resample it that's that's the fine it's etched in stone after that but with with pattern mode now you can uh you can track out stuff so you see where I got the, the drums in there. Alright, so. So, you would just isolate your chops 
first and then turn all the knobs so it's cutting all the frequencies and then you can mute out your sample chops so by pressing remain on all all the sounds that you want so if I want to take them off and now I just want to do the drums now so now I will just record that into the DAW Just record my different, record the different, my different patterns, one at a time, into Ableton. You know, because if you're doing your patterns like in four bar increments or eight bar increments, you can just record the four bars into Ableton, then you can stack it up as you get into Ableton, then you can go back do your drums, do the drums the same way. If you want to uh, get your kicks in separate, I would just do like, I just normally do the whole group of drums instead of the individual kick, snare, and hi-hat, because I'm kind of EQing my drums as it's going in the SP already, so it's kind of mixed how I want it already and leveled out, but you know. In Ableton, you can add saturator and whatnot, and put it do a waves plugin. And same with the sample. Once you get it inside there, then you just record your drum loop for like depending on how many change ups you got on your drums. But you record if you have different drum change ups on each pattern, you just record them in four bars at a time or eight bars. And call it the day and then you just piece it together in Ableton. That's pretty much how I, I track out the beats from the 404. Um, let's see here. Is there any way to record odd time signatures? Uh, like going three, four, it's, it's kind of just it's your natural timing. That's how you get the the odd time signature, or you can uh, do like the air swing technique sometimes when you uh, put like a little bit of air in front of your, your snare and just adjust it. Like you can have it quantized, hit exactly on the two when you're recording in pattern mode. And sent. let me just show you for example. Thing is out of sound, out of pads. Go to it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's tough to get like like the time signatures like on uh, Ableton. You can see when you're recording in four four. Or it just depends. Like maybe if you record the uh, like instead of recording two bars or four bars, do a odd like three bars loop five bar loop just like something like that but um also putting air in front of your snares sometimes helps so I just resampled it and I hit it twice so I can have a little bit of air so I'm just So I'm gonna hit it is get it exactly where it hits on the second snare. Alright, so now if I was to record it.
So this snare right here has it has air in front of it, but I I, I had quantized the snare so it hits exactly on the two and the four. But remember, I resampled this snare to have a, a little bit of air, so I'm gonna mess with the mark button now. So. So, so since it was quantized on the two and the four, it's really, it's getting pushed back. Now, now that I adjusted the, the air in front of that snare, it kind of like pushes it back. So you can get, you can do that to your hi-hats as well and get some, some crazy time signatures as well. And if you uh, experiment with the length of the bars as well, you can also get some different time signatures. Then you just and, and BPM also is a factor in that too. So if you want to get the, the snare rolls, hold on, got it. signatures but if you put a little bit of air in front of the your kick drums like your ghost kicks and so you can you can kind of quantize but you're kind of throwing stuff off the grid by messing with the air in front of everything but yeah that's pretty much how I get weird time signatures um, so there's another question um, sampling externally or in general how do you keep everything on time so Sampling ex externally. Yeah, so sampling externally or in general, how do you keep everything on time? Didn't you go over that in the doc? Yeah, about? so when I'm, I'm sampling the doc, so. mm -hmm. when I'm sampling in Ableton, um, so. mm
just get it to my baby right quick. chops that way and then I'll sample them directly into the SP and so, so I know it's on time once it's looping perfect in Ableton. Yes. Um uh, Joe asked if there's any arpeggiator features. Uh is on the SP there's no arpeggiator. Or tricks or anything. I can't, I'm sorry, I'll go back to the question. The only thing that's like, a, like um, as far as arpeggiating like synth chords, you can't, you can't do that in a 404. You kind of need something like an outside. That's why I use the one on one. Well, it doesn't have an arpeggio on it yet, but it has the step sequencer, so you can kind of draw in notes for certain like melodies and then it can sound like you're arpeggiating some chords real quick and then sample it into the, the 404 or if you have a keyboard like a MIDI keyboard that has dark like the pie um they have a keyboard where it has arpeggiator on it you can, you can do that and then sample it into the 404 but um as far as it having an arpeggiator feature you no know, no tricks on that. Not that I know of. Anything? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it have a swing knob? No, there's no swing knob. It's just your natural swing and uh, just the, the quantized settings I, that I was going over with the, like when you do resample mode, that's kind of, you just got to use your natural swing for that. And then you can apply it to the, the pattern mode. I can even sample it to one pad. But, uh, that's why I say always start with the hi hats. The hi hats, a lot of a lot of the swing comes from hi hats and the velocity. Model, so. Sometimes I have like two or three different hi hats at different velocities. And yeah, that's how I get the swing from that. So we'll probably end up, we went over, obviously, but um, we'll probably end it at four.
Yeah. So. Get it out with a with a little play some beats, I guess. If there's no more questions, let me there's see. No questions. Let's see, hold on. This one. Drop me down. Let's see. I don't know. Pattern mode resample main difference. Real quick, I'll just go through these last little ones real quick. So, yeah. pattern mode or resample main differences, like. Um, resample mode. It's like you're not stuck to one DPM with resample mode. It's like you can resample and layer different. Once you got your your first like your drums locked in on the DPM, you just layer everything. Then keep structuring a beat like that, but the only thing is you gotta have it mixed perfect because there's no turning back after you resample everything because the beat sometimes layered like five, six different times. But uh, with pattern mode, you can go back. It, it's a it's a little. It's not as fluid as resample mode, but you can kind of combine. The resample method with pattern mode. That's why I, I resample my hi hats, get that in, and that kind of locks the DPM that I want. And then I do my kicks and snares and samples from that. But I, I also have the option to go back and mute sounds out if I need to lower them, raise them up, add like an effect to something. You got the option to go <laughs> back to it. So that's why I prefer. The pattern mode, but the sample mode is the quickest workflow on the SP. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I could, I could do it real quick. Okay, yeah. okay. I could do a quick sample. I just want to say too, thank you guys for hanging in with us. This is our first time doing this and we're kind of learning as we go and obviously there were some technical difficulties and we hope that Roland will invite us back to do another master class for y'all. So many great questions and thank you for tuning in today. We really appreciate it. And we do know that the mic was low and all that good stuff and so hopefully we'll have a chance to work out the kinks but we really appreciate all you guys tuning in. So... Let me just resample something real quick, show how quick it takes. So, the reason why I sample everything in mono, if I had all my drums in stereo, it would be cutting sounds out. So, I have everything in mono, and then if I want to resample it to stereo, perfect so now I want to add some ghost kicks to that
also got the compression here so I can audition the, the levels. So normally with one SP, you gotta put the compression on everything. Then audition it, then take it off. But with this, I can just record and keep layering stuff and just adjust it on the fly. So I did that because the stereo, the sounds were in stereo. I should have had the drums in mono when resampling. Did That's just, why it cuts off like that. So he said. So somebody just said that the sound quality got way better. What did you just do? Did you just do anything different? I just put the vinyl sound. Okay. He said everything just got clear, more right. clear all of a sudden. Did you do something different? Nah. Okay, well, maybe we can work that out. Oh, oh man. <laughs> I'm out here sounding like RZA. Oh, Lord. <laughs> um, I rig. Okay, well, yay. It sounds better now. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, no, I didn't... Yeah, that's a very question. Beats. Beats, beats, beats. Oh, Not that sounding like RZA is a bad thing. Well, that, that, I, that, I feel that. Like
He said already reading makes knowledge, in. Huh? He said already reading makes knowledge, in. Nah. Exactly. That was. This is funny. We were just talking about that piece the other day too. <laughs> Come check the beats in them with that. Which one? Hmm? I said which one? <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's on the first beats in them with that. It's kind of old. Thank you. 
Surely, I purely destroy any toy with any game. That's why I never, never lose, lose, I never, I never play. play. Surely, I purely destroy. 
destroy any toy with any game. Destroy any toy.
somewhere in the Somewhere in the back alleys of the ghetto, there's a